Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming Last Chance Qualifier. This is a Pioneer five-round event giving away four slots to tomorrow's $20,000 Modern Invitational. I'm Todd Tandy Anderson, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We got two rounds in the books. Why don't you give us a rundown of round number three, the matchup and the decks they're playing. Well, we're down to six players at 2-0, and oh, so all of our feature matches are our undefeated players, and we're going to be starting with Gage Gorley, who we saw last round on Is It Phoenix, playing a much different matchup, Steven Dykeman on Boros Heroic. So, you know, whereas before it was the counter spells out of the sideboard that were key against the Enigmatic Fires deck, now it's going to be that red removal to deal yeah. with those early creatures out of Heroic. But Ken Dykeman uses God's Willing since Jiri steps and, you know, generates some card advantage with Dreadheart Arcanist to grind through that mm -hmm. removal and make some big threats and win the game quite quickly. Yeah, Dykeman, uh, no slouch when it comes to competitive magic. Uh, Multi-series uh, uh, winner yeah, on both the SEG cur Currently board. on top of the NRG leaderboard. Yeah, NRG leaderboard uh, and uh, is looking to crush the event today, starting off 2-0 with that Boris Rook deck, but as work cut out for him, this is it. Phoenix deck could be tough. Uh, the players are seated and just about ready in the feature match area, so let's head on down there and see if they are ready to go. We're going to have Dykeman on your right, team part of Team Swish Gaming, a phenom on the NRG series, and we're lucky to have him come out. We had him as a special guest at one of our events earlier in the year, and uh, when I saw him come out for the LCQs, I was like, dang, boy, you better start winning. I thought he was already qualified. Yeah, hasn't had much luck on uh, the Apex series. So. He only played two events. He's from the like Chicago area, so it's quite a drive. I it think. Is. I think. Oh yeah. All right. So players here are taking a look at their opening hands. We'll see if they're going to keep or Mulligan. And it looks like Gorley on Is It Phoenix is going to go to six, as well as Boris Rook's Dagman. Uh, both players taking a, a mold of six here. Who do you think that favors in the Heroic versus Phoenix matchup, Ross? Um, not a huge deal for either deck. You know, the, the, the Phoenix deck has so much card advantage, it will eventually draw out of it pretty easily. The Heroic deck, uh, rather than needing a, you know, a huge quantity of resources, needs the right mix. You know, a couple lands, a couple threats, a couple pump spells, even on six cards, that'll be just fine. All right. These players are going to look at some better sixes here, hopefully, in just a moment. Uh, the Rogue deck does a great job of defending against red removal for a couple reasons. Uh, one of the sequences I like to see out of the Boris Rogue players is, is if they only have one creature that costs one mana, I don't like playing it on turn one. I like playing it on turn two with protection backup. Yeah, you could definitely do that if you only have the one threat. If you have multiple threats, then you'd rather just be, you know, aggressive. Yes, agreed. Plays a lot like Heroic, or Heroic plays a lot like Infect, a uh, deck that I have a lot of experience with, along with my boy Tom Ross. We used to play that deck in both Modern and Legacy quite a bit, and Heroic always reminded me of it, thanks to those God's Willings, and we played Band Heroic in Standard quite a bit too, so God's Willing is one of my favorite cards all time, honestly. I'm going to staple these decks for almost a decade now. Oh man, that sounds horrible when you say that. It's just, I'm so old. I'm so old, chat. All right. I believe Gorley is going to be on the play because when they were mulliganing, Dagman waited until Gorley was finished mulliganing before making his mulligan decision. Dagman here figuring out what to put on the bottom. A very deliberate player is Dagman, and with Boris Heroic, he's, you know, fine using all 50 minutes of the round when he can. Yeah, when you're playing a deck like Boris Heroic, you know, you still have a lot of decisions to make, but they're all condensed on the opening two, three, four turns. So you right. really want to be careful and make sure that you make the best decisions that you can. Yeah, your plays are magnified because of the nature of your deck. And so any small mistake often cascades into a loss. Dreadheart Arcanist is a nice one. If we can get that one down early, maybe a Fiery Impulse doesn't have Spell Mastery yet. Every little bit of card advantage off the Arcanist is very helpful, and it can set up some really explosive turns by letting you cast you know, three or four spells at once. All right, looks like Dagman's going to lead off here with a DFC. That's the Sajiri Shelter turned into Sajiri something or another. Sajiri Glacier. Okay, and that's going to be a tapped white source. And so next turn he's able to maybe play a one drop with protection or just get his two drops going. 
I did see Dreadhorde Arcanist in hand, so that might be the play for turn number two. But Gorley going to play a Stevens. Shocking. And here is a Ledger Shredder, the Birdman. Do it for me, Ross. Just try. No. Even if you do just a... That's fine. Just try. <laughs> okay, going to go back Dykeman's way. see what kind of threat he can play the arcanist is obviously your best source of card advantage but it applies the least amount of pressure and we know the is a phoenix deck has so much card advantage it will eventually overwhelm you so does dykeman want to play that grindy game or does he want to be more aggressive all right dykeman here contemplating his options to start for red mana maybe this is monastery swiss beer No, I'm going to pay two. We're going to pay one. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and wait. And then when he plays the thing, I'm going to say what it is. How about that? And then you can tell me about all the stuff. Here's a Swiss Spirit. What does that mean, Ross? Here's an attack. It means he probably has something like Defiant Strike here. Yep. Though so th that would then allow the Ledger Shredder to connive. Yeah, I would have blocked. All right, moving on to turn number three. Gage Gorley has some interaction in hand. Looks like Fire Impulse, but we're going to start with Opt. There is White Man at the ready for Dykeman, so if he has God's Willing, he can use that to protect his Monastery Swiss Spear from the Spell Mastery Fire Impulse. Finds a land. All right, and we're going to go for that Fire Impulse. And it looks like we have a Spell Pierce at the ready. Dykeman now thinking about whether or not he wants to interact. Yeah, I'm going to let the Gnive happen first. Gorley already has Spell Mastery wrapped up, so... Is there a God's Willing? And does Dykeman even want to protect a Monastery Swift Spear? Yeah, that's a great question. My guess is no, it's not that useful. I mean... All your other creatures are way more important, I think, especially in this matchup. Impulse resolves. Ledger Shredder grows. Attack for two. Gage Gorley is now the beatdown. Secretly, he always was. <laughs> Got to end the game. Going back Dykeman's way. See what he wants okay. to do this turn. He, I don't know if he has another land. I guess I've just never seen this land before. Maybe it's a plains, maybe it's a mountain, maybe it's a battlefield forge. Maybe it's a sacred foundry. Maybe it's a blood moon. I'm gonna guess it's a mountain. Yeah, I'm it's battlefield forge. I know it's battlefield. No, forge. there's not a, there's no mountains in the deck. Yeah, it's battlefield forge, but you would never guess that. It's a your dreadlord arcanist with white mana up. You're gonna pass it back to Gorley's way. See if he has the answer for the Dreadhorde Arcanist. We know he has spell pierce. Here's a thing in the ice. This one is very tough for Dykeman to beat without one of those one-cost uh, Reckless Rages to kill it. Yeah, it doesn't have one as of yet, and it does not take many turns to transform a thing in the ice, especially now that the density of one mana spells in the deck is even higher post slight event. Look at it, Ross. Look at it. It says golf sucks now and has always sucked. Imagine... That's on a Magic the Gathering card. Welcome to 2023. Uh, and where the title of the card always is at the bottom. Ah, uh, yep. yes. As well as the colors. They better never hire me. <laughs> I'm going to cause so much chaos if they ever hire me. Become ungovernable is what they say. All right, we find Reckless Rage. That's a pretty big pickup here for Dykeman. That's why he's on top of the leaderboard of the NRG. He finds the cards when he needs them. We'll see how he wants to sequence this turn. It's a very important turn, perhaps the most important turn of the whole game. Maybe thinking about trying to throw away the Dreadheart Arcanist and cast the Reckless Rage twice this turn, in which case you'd want to hit the Shredder first. Right. We know that there's a spell pierce in Gorley's hand, so you could potentially get the second Reckless Raid spell pierce, and that would be a disaster. Well, the second one doesn't cost mana from the graveyard off Arcanist, oh, so true. I feel like we can play around that. We also have another 
horrific looking Battlefield Forge we can play to help pay around play around that spell Pierce. Yep, this is the worst Battlefield Forge I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the art, and I don't get the quote. I, you know, I guess that's the definition of not for me, and that's fine. It can be it's for somebody. Fine. Can be for somebody else. It's not fine. All right, double reckless rage seems like a reasonable play here. It does kill the dreadhord arcanist off. We can maybe give our dreadhord arcanist protection from red after we choose targets with it, if we have God's willing. Let's see if Gowerly wants to interact here. We're going to cast Spell Pierce. I'm going to pay, man. I don't know what to tell you. Yep. We pay. Your thing's dead. See ya. Okay. Now we know the shields are down. We can go Battlefield Forge. We can go God's Willing My Thing after... Sorry. We can go Attack, Reckless Rage, Targeting, Thing in the Ice, and the Dreadheart Arcanist. We can give Dreadheart Arcanist protection from red so it doesn't take the two damage the second time. Keeps it in play. Yeah. And Thing the Ice is gone. We're effectively trading Reckless Rage, God's Willing, and a Dreadheart Arcanist trigger for the two creatures on the other side of the battlefield. Yeah. Now, this is a timing issue. If Dykeman main phases the God's Willing to give it protection from red, he won't be able to play the Reckless Rage from the graveyard. Yeah, you won't have two legal targets to put it on the stack. But once it's on the stack, you know, giving your Dreadheart Arcanist protection from red, it will still resolve to the best of its ability, and it has one legal target, which is the Thing in the Ice. All right. All right, let's see. I believe this is a God's Willing. Um, if this is something that gives it indestructible instead, then we can do it. But, oh, it's a Defiant Strike. Okay, he draws a card. Yeah. Interesting. We, we knew about the Defiant Strike from the previous attack. At least we... So, yeah, it looks like he wanted to get rid of that Ledger Shredder, and he's going to wait a turn to try to answer this thing in the ace. That's risky. Yeah, yeah. I agree. You know, not just a removal spell for Dreadheart Arcanist would be a blowout, but just cast three spells. Well, we know that Gage Gorley has very few cards left in hand, and Dykeman knows that too. We saw that spell burst being cast last turn kind of in a weird way. That usually means that, like, uh, Treasure Cruise is coming next turn, and that is what's happening here. Big Cruise for two, minus a counter on the Thing in the Ice. And now Dykeman may be going to regret not killing that Thing in the Ice last turn. We'll see if Gorley can play two more spells. I think it was two lands and a spell. I think it was a spell pierce, which is awkward AF. Yeah, not very. Though, if we have any other spell, spell pierce just to transform, mm -hmm. the 7 8 would be quite good. All right, another and thing another in the ice. Thing, that's what it was. Okay. And that's still pretty awkward. Well,. If you're Dykeman, you got to be feeling pretty confident here because you get to freely attack with the uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist and get the Reckless Rage. There's no way the Dreadhorde Arcanist would have gotten to untap if something like Fire Impulse was on the other side. The only thing you really have to be afraid of is another Spell Pierce, and you don't really have to be afraid. You just have to be cognizant and play around it the best you can. Yeah, and he has plenty of mana with which to do that. So many ugly Battlefield Forges. Yeah, well. They still tap for Colas to pay for Spell Pierce. That's just like... Your opinion, man. Yeah, but it's the correct opinion. There's no such thing as a correct opinion, Ross. There is in this case. <laughs> okay, all right. Fair play. Dykeman here. I'm gonna spin two for something. Probably fencing ace plus. That's what this card is, huh? This yeah. card's pretty good. Illuminator Virtuoso. Let's get that one on the screen. Two cost, one, one, double strike. It uh, connives, and when you connive, you get to do some... When it's the target of a spell or ability, you connive. Right. And then, uh, so you pump it with Monstrous Rage, it's just spell, whatever. Boom, boom. Yeah, but with spell or ability, then it would go infinite with, like, the cores. That would be stupid. All right, looks like Nobody we're main phasing Reckless Rage on Illuminator Virtuoso. This is a bit awkward, but I think what we're doing is trying to get the connive up pretty high here. Uh, we're going to play Spell Pierce on the Monstrous Rage. I think that Dykeman is pretty happy about that, but we still get the connive. I think Spell Pierce is just resolving, and that's yeah. fine. We can pitch one of these poopy lands, and then we get to attack with the Arcanist and Reckless Rage, the thing of the ice that's on one counter. Right. Yeah, Dykeman's trying to end this game before the second thing in the ice transforms. So 
So went for an aggressive line, got got by the second spell pierce, but a difficult card to play around. And we'll be able to flash back that Ancestor Anger next turn with the Arcanist. Oh, I thought that was the new Monstrous Rage. It was Ancestral Anger. Okay. All right. Well, here comes the Reckless Rage. That's going to deal four to the Thing in the Ice with one counter left on it. And Dreadhorror Arcanist gets blocked. Do you have another Reckless Rage to buff? No. And we're going to pass the turn back. Did we miss a plus one, plus one counter on the Connive? No, we discarded the land. Oh, the Ugly Battlefield Forge. It looks like a Lightning Bolt. Yep. No. Yeah. I'm sorry, it looks like a lightning bolt striking a flag on a golf course. Right. I think the hand for Gorley is Spire Bluff Canal and Fiery Impulse here. So yeah, picking up both creatures, seeing which one he wants to target. They're I both mean, scary. They are both scary, but the Arcanist is the one that gives you more spells. I'm inclined to hit that one. Well, I think whatever you go for, it's not going to work. We have this Battlefield Forge up to maybe protect, you know, but uh, that... It's predicated on Dykeman having a piece of protection, and all these white cards in hand leads me to believe that at least one of them is. Yeah. If Dykeman does have protection, you'd also rather target the Dreadhorde Arcanist so you Dykeman doesn't get a connive trigger out of the exchange. Okay. And this is going to trigger the thing in the ice as well. Yeah. That's the important part of this play. Got to remember that. With thing on two, we can pretty easily chain a couple cantrips together. Does have a protection spell, finds a sacred foundry off the connive, discards that. It looks like it is a god's willing because that's the scry. Scry's mm -hmm. to the bottom. So nothing good off the top coming yet for Steven Dykeman. These next We're learning. <laughs> We're learning what all the alt arts are. It's coming. Except uh Legionnaire here, we can play that as a two two haster. Thing the ice is getting a little scary though. We do have a, gra a graveyard full of cool stuff for the Dreadhorde Arcanist to play, though. Is there another God's Willing here, maybe, to just force the Virtuoso through? I think it's, we're starting with Defiant Strike. Okay. Not 100%. But... Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Can I have happened? Just another land. Discard that. Oh, it's Homestead Courage. Okay, so okay. that's going to put a counter on our Illuminator Virtuoso. It's going to be a bit larger than it was before. Battlefield Forge going to... Still quite in charge. <laughs> All right, and I believe this is Defiant Strike. We're going to target, and we're going to draw a card and connive. I'm going to connive first. Finds a favored Hoplite, so we'll discard one of these creatures. Virtuoso will get a counter. And we get to plus one and draw a card. Yeah, we'll represent that with the black die in the middle of the table. And a mm. Swift Spear. Now we can play Swift Spear and then another Homestead Courage. And then when we attack with Dreadhorde Arcanist, we can play another Defiant Strike. And I think that that is enough to actually force a chump block of Thing in the Ice on the Illuminator Virtuoso. Yeah, I think it is. Because currently the Virtuoso is four power. Homestead Courage will get it up to five at least, and the Defiant uh, Defiant Strike, or I mean, we're going to Ancestral Linger from the Graveyard. That'll give Trample. Okay, so maybe it doesn't matter. Well, we oh. found Reckless Rage. Now definitely yeah, that's game. Sheesh. Yeah, Gorley had uh, one turn to try to find enough spells to transform Thing in the Ice, was unable to do so, and that's all she wrote. A well-navigated turn here from Steven Dykeman. Well, I don't think it's going to matter. So, Regal Trade is going to kill the thing in the ice. We're going to discard a land, and now we get to attack. This is 3, 4, 5, that's yeah, 10. Yeah, this is already 11. 11. Any, any pump spell on either creature. <laughs> well, we want to put it on the double strike. 11 is a little sure. short. Oh, yeah, I was looking at Dykeman's life total of 12, so yeah. All right, well, this should do it, as long as we discard a spell, and I believe we have a spell in hand. Yeah, we still have that 10th District Legionnaire, so 
That'll do it. All right, 14. game one goes to Steven Dykeman on Boros Heroic. Impressive stuff there. And uh, is it Phoenix now on the back foot? Uh, Gorley here, you know, playing well, it seems, but uh, unfortunately just didn't have the right answers at the right time for it, the Boris, Boris Heroic deck. Yeah, uh, looked to be in good shape having the Treasure Cruise there with mm. the thing in the ice, but the Treasure Cruise was Whoopee. a dud. It was pretty bad. All right, as these players reach to the sideboard for a little bit of help, I'm going to reach over to Ross for a little bit of help. How are they going to sideboard, Ross? Is it Phoenix from Gorley versus this Boris Heroic deck? Let's start there. Okay, uh, on Gorley's side, I see two Sahili Sublime Artificer, two Crackling Drake, three Brotherhoods End, two Mystical Dispute, one Abraid, one Disdainful Stroke, one Narsense Perversal, one Negate, and two Ether Gust. Not a big fan of any of these cards. Yeah, zero. Z well, the problem is it's white creatures and red creatures, and so a lot of the interaction lines up poorly versus half of the creatures. I noticed that a lot when I was playing Izzet decks. My running volleys would kill most things, but not everything, especially Dreadhorde Arcanist, and then either Gus handles those red creatures but doesn't deal with favorite yeah. line. And like two-mana removal is not that good in this matchup. Almost all of their spells are one-mana spells, yeah. so you just end up falling behind. Brotherhood's End is tempting, but this is not a deck that plays out a ton of creatures at once for mm. you to sweep. It plays one to two creatures and holds up protection. God's Welling obviously protects. Even pump spells can then protect from the Brotherhood's End, so I don't like expensive yeah. sorceries in the matchup. Plus, favorite hoplite, all you have to do is hit it with a Defiant Strike or whatever, and then it yeah. just protects itself with its uh, trigger. Exactly. Effect. So I'm, I just don't really like this sideboard for this yeah. matchup. Sahili can be interesting. It creates a lot of blockers, in particular colorless blockers. So yeah, God's but there's is so thing. much trample now in the deck yes. with Ancest Monstrous Rage and Ancestral Anger. A yes. So with all the trample effects, those chump blockers are a lot worse than they used to be. You're exactly right. So this might be a same 60, and it's not a situation where I feel good about that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the same 60 is a show of, of confidence, and sometimes it's a show of desperation. Yeah. Like, ooh, I didn't really think <laughs> about this matchup. Didn't expect it. Yeah, sometimes it's no changes. <laughs> Sometimes it's no changes. changes. <laughs> On the other side of things, uh, Dykeman playing Boris Heroic. Does he need any help against Gorley? And what's he going to be bringing in? He is going to be looking at a sideboard of Jagatha the Wellspring as a companion. That'll stay in the sideboard. Two Rydane, God of the Worthy. Two Destroy Evil. Two Flowstone Infusion. Two Lower Ends Escape. Two Rending Volley. Three Showdown of the Scalds. And one Rest in Peace. So several good options. I love the one rest in peace. It looks a little weird, but it's not a card you ever want to draw multiples of. Right. So it's just there as a high roll kind of card. If you want more card advantage in the matchup, Showdown of the Skulls is excellent. And then you have some good answers to Thing in the Ice in particular. You can bring in Rending Volley or Destroy Evil, depending upon which one you think has more right. utility against the rest of the threats in the deck. Probably Rending Volley in case you're expecting Crackling Drake. Well, you also know there's Thing in the Ice and Ledger Shredder. And both of these things, like, you don't yeah. know what the numbers are on them. And both of them are quite strong against you. Yeah. And then the Lawrence Escapes, just bringing in more protection against the heavier removal spell deck also makes a lot of sense. Maybe you trim on Defiant Strikes. Right. And you get some more protection in your deck. So a lot of good options for Dykeman, depending upon how he wants to approach the matchup. All right, both players here are now going to be taking a look at their opening seven card hands. These players are 2-0. In our five-round LCQ, this Pioneer event will grant four tickets to our Invitational, that $20,000 Modern Main Event, tomorrow morning. And we'll see if either of these players can move to 3-0 and increase their chances of getting there. Looks like Gorley going to take a mulligan. We'll see if Dykeman wants to keep his, and I think he does. While he's taking mulligan, I'm going to take this time to thank our sponsors for this weekend's festivities. Uh, Ultimate Guard is the top of the line for TCG products. Check out their katana sleeves and the giant archive deck box to keep your commander decks and cubes safe while you're traveling. Thank you so much to Moxfield.com for sponsoring the event. Uh, their website is great for building decks and sharing them with your friends. It's extremely easy to use. Highly recommend it. I've been using it for my stream for the last few days, and I quite like it. Uh, Wings Etc. Grill and Pub, thank you so much for sponsoring today's event. Uh, they keep us fed and happy during these long tournament weekends. We were there last night. We're likely going back this evening and maybe tomorrow, too. Get us some wings and some boigas. We're also going to get them jerk tater tots. Oh, yeah. Appreciate our sponsors quite a bit. Now we're about to start game number two here. Gorley going to put one on bottom. Spy Wolf can out and go. Let's see if there's any one drop from Dykeman. Just a tapped Sacred Cup. Otherworldly Gaze is the end step here. This is a newer addition to the Phoenix Strategies. Uh, you know, they were a little bit more 
uh, attrition oriented i would like to say now though i feel like they're turning the corner a bit and trying to be a little more explosive with those phoenix draws and gaze helps uh, enable that yeah there are certain builds that are more focused on on the phoenixes certain ones that are a little bit slower uh just depends on where you want to position yourself and gorily opting for the more all in let's trigger some arc light phoenixes as quickly and consistently as possible kind of build all right all the storm giants is land number two for gorily let's see if he has a ledger shredder or thing in the ice we're going to start with consider main phase i don't think there's many one drop creatures in the deck this feels out of place bins of brotherhood end so those did come in draws arc light phoenix though so if he doesn't have lightning axe it's going to be stuck in his hand for a minute I do see two Phoenixes in the hand, so not where you want to be after a Mulligan for sure. Yeah, and there's a good number of threats in Dykeman's hand. Didn't have one on turn one, didn't want to run out the favored Hoplite into potential removal, but has, you know, potentially Hoplite plus protection here, has 10th District Legionnaire, looks like Illuminator Virtuoso, and Dreadhord Arcanist. Yeah, a lot of options, a lot of creatures. That's where you want to be in a matchup where they have a bunch of removal. We can afford to play out a one-drop here and throw protection at it to kind of... Uh, I don't know, tangle the mana of the Phoenix deck, so to speak, or we can just play a two-drop, let it die, and start rebuilding next turn. No idea. Rest in peace, I believe. And oh. that's out of the sideboard, and Dykeman going to eat the graveyard from Phoenix. Nicely done. No spell pierce. Those might not even be in the deck anymore. Yeah, that's what I thought was virtuous, so it was a rest in peace. So, uh, you know, all you need is one. Why would you play more than one? When you draw the first one, it does enough. Just draw it. Why play more cyborg card when fewer cyborg cards do trick? <laughs> Three mana. Here is Sahili, Sublime Artificer. To get this one on the screen, this is one of the Planeswalkers from War of the Spark. Has a static effect of whenever you play a non-creature spell, you get a 1-1 one, one servo and then has minus two. One of your artifacts becomes a copy of target artifact or creature. Uh, you control until the end of turn, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So basically what we're trying to do here with Sahili is just make a bunch of 1-1s. One At some point, we might play something like a Crackling Drake and turn one of our 1-1s one into a Crackling Drake to have a big attack. But for the most part, this is just a token generator. Yeah, it's a card that, a threat specifically, that synergizes with the high density of cantrips and cheap spells in the Is It Phoenix deck, but does so in a way that dodges the graveyard. So quite right. good against the rest in peace that Dykeman had played the previous turn. Now, normally you see things like uh, Young Pyromancer filled this role, uh, but Sahili dodges spot removal quite well, and you sometimes see that in the sideboard instead. But does Dykeman have something for this 10th District Legionnaire? You know, Monstrous Rage would be excellent. You could just take out the Sahili right now before it triggers to make any tokens. I don't yeah. think he has one of those, but might have some other trick like an Ancestral Anger. You could put it down to one. I see a Rage in hand. That's yeah. actually going to make this thing up to a 4-4 four, four even after the everything's done oh, resolving. No, no that is Monstrous Rage. That's why. Okay. Anyway, yeah. uh, it's going to get a counter, oh. and then plus uh, 3 plus 1, and also the uh, roll token, which are uh, plus 2 plus 0 in the roll token, which is plus 1 plus 1. Yeah. So it's going to be a 6-3. Right. So that's going to be able to kill the Sahili. And then it's going to leave it as a 4-4 afterwards, which means it dodges all those three damage spells from Gorley. Yeah. When you said Rage, I thought you meant Reckless Rage. Yeah. Everything's mad. <laughs> uh, yeah, a really bad sequence there for Gorley. Loses his Sahili for no value and now has to deal with this really powerful threat. And a third Arclight Phoenix drawn for Gorley. Things are going all sorts of wrong. Finds a Lightning Axe that can kill this Legionnaire. Likely going to go for that. Or he puts Fiery Impulse in hand. So he sees it as a 3-3, but it's not a 3-3. It's a 4-4. There's a roll token and a plus one, plus one counter on it. So you have to be careful here. And he has to discard one of these Phoenixes to take it out, I believe. Play Spikefield Hazard as a land. Can't let him untap. It's going to be too damaging. And we're yeah. going to lose one of our Phoenix, but I think we got to do it. Oof, and we're just down so many cards at this point. The Lightning Axe, very poor in the face of Rest in Peace. All right, back Dykeman's way. Still a grip full of cards and a couple of creatures to boot. And Gage down to just Arclight Phoenix in hand. Dykeman firmly in control thanks to that Rest in Peace and really nice start. Yeah, and still has a couple threats back. I think also has a God's Willing to protect them. So everything looking good for Steven Dykeman. 
turns its graveyard sideways because there was no graveyard there to begin with. It's all exiled. Doesn't matter. Yeah, Dreadheart Arcanist, not really a threat at this point. It pretty poorly synergizes with the rest in peace, but I think uh, Dykeman will take the trade off. All right, Dykeman going to use his mana efficiently here. We're going to go ahead and play Ancestral Anger on the favorite Hoplite, maybe, to cycle it and draw a card and put a counter on our creature. Instead, no. We're going to say, never mind. I'm going to pass the turn back to you. Orly, draws for turn, just Phoenix in hand. Not right. sure what that was. Time for a Snare Thopter. Does Snare Thopter have haste? Yeah. Nice. Does Snare Thopter come back from the graveyard when you play three instants of sorceries? Does if you cheat. Does if it's Arclight Phoenix instead. <laughs> All right. What well, we got? Here's the Phoenix. Do we get aggressive or do we play it back on D? If it blocks, it does go to the exile zone, so we're going to hit him. Bang, bang. Let's get him. Three upstairs. Dagman, going to go back your way. Let's see what you can do damage-wise. Finds another Monstrous Rage. This is a lot of potential damage and could grow that favorite hoplite out of range of being challenged via burn spells. Yeah, so if we have Rage plus Anger, that'll be an eight-point attack. All right, start off with that Ancestral Anger. We're going to plus one, plus one counter. It also gets plus one strength from uh, the yeah. natural buff. It does count stuff in the graveyard afterwards, but the graveyard is gone. Still gives plus one, plus oh, though. Yeah, it's going to be a seven-point attack this turn. And I think he has another piece of protection, too. It might be a Defiant Strike that he's using as a pseudo-God's Willing in the face of red removal. All right, here is the Monstrous Rage. It's going to be a big buff. Yeah, plus three for the turn. Has base power one, two counters, and the roll token. So it's a four power creature, and then plus three temporarily. So this is seven, and then we've got at least four for the next turns. Plus the gods willing back. Everything going according to plan for Steven Dykeman. Yeah, normally the Phoenix is great at playing defense here, blocking, and then you play some card draw and bring it back. But that rest in peace sitting on the table means that that is no longer an option. And so Gage Gorley's options are being strangled here. It's three mana. We're going to play okay. another Sahili Sublime Artificer. This is a pretty good top deck, considering the Monstrous Rage has already been cast. Is it the roll token it's that the grants the token. trample? <laughs> yep. <laughs> What a pump spell. Yeah, unfortunate for a Gage Gorley. If we, without that roll token, things might be looking up. He could be attacking in the air while stalling on the ground, chaining cantrips together, making the servo tokens, and chump blocking turn after turn. But the monstrous roll token puts the kibosh on that plan, and he's going to need to find a lot more to get back into this game. Monstrous Rage, an impressive pump spell uh, from one of the new, the last two sets. It's uh, specifically great with the uh, heroic creatures or things that just like get bigger when you target them. Like, uh, I was gonna say fencing ace, but I know it's not fencing ace. It's, it's the fencing that Illuminator fencing ace plus. Virtuoso. Yeah, Illuminator Virtuoso gets a monstrous buff. Pun intended. Uh, not only does it get trample, but uh, gets a lot of plus ones. All right, servo token. Looks pretty shrimpy in the face of this favorite hoplite with trample. I like the kindergarten classroom one to represent its size. <laughs> what is this? The count? Is this Sesame Street? One, one servo. Ah, ah, ah. Well, the count is the best Sesame Street character. Maybe second. Snuffleupagus is pretty high in the power rankings. Elmo doesn't like it when you call him bottom rung. Well, Elmo is creepy, so... Yeah, that's why he rules. <laughs> you never know if he's going to be sneaking into your room at night with a knife. <laughs> it's Elmo. Here's the Defiant Strike. So that's going to give enough trample damage to kill the Sahili. So, And then he, now here's a Virtuoso, and I think we still have the Protection spell. No other tricks for Steven Dykeman, but I'm not sure if he needs any at this point. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so either. Uh, here's Ledger Shredder. I mean, look, if we have like a bounce spell, maybe a removal spell, we can do something. Here's Otherworldly Gaze. That's not very good. 
yeah. in uh, conjunction with that recipes on the other side of the table. But uh, we're going to get the stack at the top of our deck a little bit. Find Picklock Prankster. I Prankster is not good in the face of Rest in Peace either. I think it might be. I think it looks at the top four, and then you pick one, and then the rest go to the graveyard. Or it lets you pick from among the cards that are milled. And even if it's an exile, unless it says, like... Uh, so there are some cards that, like, mill X number and then, say, grab one from the graveyard. But Prankster is one of the cards that pulls from only the cards that are milled. Oh, it does say from among the milled yeah. cards. Yeah. And I, okay. think, I think you can technically get it yeah, with Prankster. Yeah. I knew it milled, so I assumed it was returning from the graveyard, but... Mm. No, it just says put one of the milled cards uh, into your hand. So, yeah, it should be able to go from exile into your hand. That's a weird templating. All right, attack with a phoenix. we got to get aggressive because we're not blocking that well. Ledger Shredder back on defense against the Virtuoso, but we know that that thing can get big in a hurry. Dagman's hand doesn't look that great, though. We have two more creatures, but we're going to start off here. I believe this is a Defiant Strike. But... Okay, so we never had a protection spell. These were just Defiant Strikes. Well, their protection with favor top line. True. All right, we're going to discard and connive. Draw off the Defiant Strike. No, nope, that's a God's Willing. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, we weren't sure, and now we know it's God's Willing. But uh, and until Dykeman performs game mechanics, <laughs> it's so hard to tell the difference between the two. So likely giving pro blue, so the Virtuoso is going to... Oh, we did this on the upkeep to try to dig for another spell. Love it. We did find Reckless Rage so we can blow up the Ledger Shredder. It's going to allow Gage Gorley to connive, but it's going to make him connive as Prank Clock prank, prank Prickster? Prick, prick, pick lock Prankster? Pick Lock Prankster. It's going to force the, the, the loot. He gone. Oh, it's Consider. Interesting. All right. Yeah. We have to connive a spell away so that our Virtuoso gets the three toughness and survives the Reckless Rage. This is now a 12-point attack, it looks like. Let's see, 3, 4, 5, plus 6 is 11, 12. All right, down to 1. Now the question is, do we... Oh, but there's plus 1 floating from one of the pump spells, maybe? Maybe not. Anyway, Gorley is defeated, and Dykeman moves to 3 and 0, cementing, or coming close to cementing his place in Sunday's main event. Yeah. 